Hi, this is Pete Myers. I'd like to introduce you to Bird's Eye Log, an app for your iPhone that lets you submit your bird sightings to eBird, the database of bird observations at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. If you have an internet connection or cell phone reception, you can do this right from the field, right as you're watching the birds. If you don't, Bird's Eye lets you save your observations to send to eBird later. Let's see how it works. First, you need to have an eBird account. You can enter your account information here. If you don't have a, an account yet, tap on Register Now, and it'll open up a Safari window that takes you straight to eBird. Let's go back to Bird's Eye Log. There we are. Let's go back home. Let's get started. Tap Submit Sightings. Here you've got several choices of how to choose the location where you've been birding, either a public hotspot or a personal location. Let's choose our location and then a hotspot. So enter the zip code for Nogales, Arizona, which is 85628. And you see Nogales comes up. Okay, and it's going to draw a map of the area. We zoom out a little bit, and let's go looking for Patagonia Lake State Park, which is right here. Let's choose that as our birding site. eBird is downloading checklists of birds that are appropriate for this region and for this time of year. Let's just begin birding now. So hit start. It's initializing the checklist. And it'll, there we have it displayed. So there are quite a few birds that could be seen here in Patagonia Lake State Park. Let's begin by entering cinnamon teal, uh, three. Okay. Oh, and also uh, blue winged teal, five. Okay. You can also enter data by typing in the species name. If you tap where it says enter and then hit a number, space, and then road runner, greater road runner pops up. There we have one observation of a greater road runner. I could have used the species code, the, the bird banding code, GRRO. Let's type in two verdon. There that is. So we've got verdon. Now let's try one E L T R. Ooh, that's fantasy birding for you. So that's enough for this theoretical checklist, enough for you to get the general idea as to how bird's eye log works. Incidentally, I'm going to delete this from eBird as soon as I'm done. These birds have all been seen here within the past week, but not by me. So let's go ahead and take the next steps to review and submit. But before I do that, just for safety's sake, in case the internet connection dies right in the middle of the process, I'm going to save the uh, checklist, hit OK, and then let's do review and submit. Okay, so here we are preparing to review and submit the checklist. First, we've got to identify whether it was a traveling stationary or incidental uh, checklist, and I'm going to leave it as traveling. I'm going to confirm that it's a complete checklist by checking yes. I'm going to leave the number of obser observers at one, the duration, let's call 60 minutes, and the distance, let's call 0 0.25 miles. So it's now ready to submit. Checking the internet connection, submitting the checklist, it's been submitted. And there we are. There, eBirds accepted the checklist. So let's go back home, and that's it. You can use Bird's Eye Log to get your birding observations into eBird right from the field. It's easier, faster, and more accurate than waiting until you're back with your computer at home. Easier, faster, and more accurate means more and better observations are making their way into the eBird database. So next time you're out birding, fire up Bird's Eye Log to record your observations and to send them to eBird.